you'll ever just wake up and not feel good and wonder what am I going to do today? So you go on downstairs. Pour yourself a cup of coffee. Flip on the TV. And unless you got something better to do, come along with me. And let's get started. There's no one out here. I mean, it's like we're used to going to like the Smokies and doing national parks and like really popular hikes, but these trails out in the national forest. Hey, there's a couple of good looking shows, but what else can I do today? If I can't get out and I have to stay in, I might as well. The best thing to do is read. And I have found that I like to read books that are nonfiction, um, something that has to do with adventure or an experience somebody has went through. I like to read about stuff that actually happened. And uh, I would like to give you a list of five books that I recommend you should give a shot as well. The first book is called... Man's Search for Meaning, and this was written by Victor E. Frankel and has become a source of inspiration in America for many, many years. This is probably one of the most influential books you can read, um, and it just continues to inspire everyone who reads it. And basically, Victor E. Frankel in the 1930s was a psychiatrist, but he got um, abducted and put in the, constant, the Nazi concentration camps. And so he talks a lot about a lot of his experiences that he had seen there, a lot of the horrors and the terrible things that they made these people go through. He was a survivor. And he survived because of how he changed his thinking. And so what Frankel argues is that we cannot avoid suffering, but we can choose how to cope with it, find a meaning in it, and move forward. And in his theory, known as logotherapy, it's a conviction that the primary human drive is not pleasure, but the pursuit of what we find meaningful. And Man's Search for Meaning has become one of the most influential books in America and continues to inspire us. So if you ever find yourself in a situation that you're having trouble with or you're just feeling down and out, a Man's Search for Meaning can uh, really give you a new perspective on that, so I highly recommend this for everyone, just to give this book a read. This next book is called The 29th Day by Alex, Alex Messenger. And what Alex talks about in this book is his own journey uh, into the Canadian tundra with him and a group of five friends. And Alex was a outdoorsman, he loved adventure, and he decided to tackle this this new uh, adventure with him and five buddies. Well, on the 29th day, he gets attacked while alone on a solo hike by a grizzly. And it describes all everything leading up to this 29th day, what happened during this 29th day, and describes the attack in just absolute vivid descriptions and it is captivating it'll keep you turning page by page to see what happens next um, he was 17 years old when this happened um, and this is a great great book to read um, again definite page turner highly recommended it's hard to put down once you pick this book up all right this next one is called the river of doubt and this is of course about one of my favorite presidents Theodore Roosevelt, and if you know anything about Theodore Roosevelt, he was an avid adventurer. He loved to be in the great outdoors, and this book starts out um, how he lost his, a third term presidency uh, that he was going for, not as a Republican or Democrat. He was he was running as a third party, and he thought, you know, he probably wouldn't get it, but he didn't think he would lose by as much as he lost by and Theodore Roosevelt does not like to lose. And in this book, it talks about how he kind of went to a little slight depression after that happened, was kind of wallowing in his sorrows, and he gets a letter from somebody in, 
in uh, South America. Invites him to come down, and Theodore's son happened to be down there uh, building bridges anyway, so he thought, man, this would be a great time to explore the Amazon and be able to see my son while I'm there. Well, throughout this adventure, he decides instead of just taking a nice touristy boat ride um, up and down some known channels of the Amazon, he was going to go deep, deep into the Amazon and make discoveries that no man had made yet, uh, just because he was that type of an explorer. And throughout this journey, we're talking months and months in the Amazon, he met Indians and tribes out there that have never been contacted by humans. They uh, had malaria. They had all sorts of things happen to their party. They lost men. Um, and just all the struggles that he went through and almost didn't make it out of. And this book is also a great, great page turner. If you uh, like Theodore Roosevelt and how uh, much of a bull type of man he was, you will really, really like this book as well. And uh, I definitely think you should pick this up, give this a read. Great, great stories of adventure and friendship and everything that can go on whenever you are side by side with comrades for weeks and months at a time, especially when they go and get stuff. And this book is called River of the Gods by Candace Millard. And this is a riveting story over men trying to find the source of the Nile. And this is back in the 19th century, of course, where there was a frenzy of interest in Egypt over the source of the Nile. And so if you've ever heard of the great explorer Richard Burton, spoke 29 languages, he studied all sorts of different religions and always advocated how he knew them all and believed in none, stuff like that. He was a very, very decorated soldier, uh, great explorer, and he was one of the men selected to go on this journey. Well, of course, he needed a comrade, and so they selected to go with him, a guy by the name of John Henning Speak. And these two men clashed from the get-go. Uh, Speak was a younger know-it-all trying to put his uh, get his name out there and really become something. Richard was experienced and liked to take things at a little bit slower, slower pace. But also with them, they took another man by the name of Sidi Mabrarik Bombay, who was enslaved um, at one time, but once his captor had died, he was released. And he also wanted to become a great explorer, so he accompanied these men. Well, on their way to find the source of the Nile, they experienced hardship and illness and attacks and everything. And Richard Burton ended up getting so sick he could no longer proceed. But speak, he wasn't so down and out, and he thought he could go forward again. So they both thought they found the source of the Nile. They both thought that was in a different spot. And eventually, we find out the source of the Nile. But who discovered it? Was it Burton or was it Speak? You're going to have to find out for yourself. And this last book is called Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. And I lost the paper cover for this book. But what John talks about in this book, in 1996, Outside Magazine contacted John Krakauer to go on a trip to the summit of Mount Everest to write a story about it. And during these events that he was there, he captures how hard it was even just to get there, let alone to get acclimated and do the climb with several different parties um, here trying to make it to the summit of Mount Everest. But there was a terrible storm, and there was lots of people who lost their lives, including four from John's own party, and many more that would end up perishing in the aftermath. And this book talks about everything they went through, uh, trying to help people, trying to get to a safe place, and all the different things that can happen when you're out um, on the highest mountain in the world. Uh, so it's a definitely a, another page-turner, and that's, again, why it's one of my top five. Uh, definitely 
recommend going and picking up a copy of this but just for another great adventure tale and all these books i will try to put links down below here if you like any of these books or have read any of these books please leave me a comment below um, thank you for watching guys again i'm cletus with get out and we'll see you next time